Two weeks ago I have ordered this little set from Big Tree Tech. For my own money. I'm not sponsored or anything, so let me share with you guys my initial impression and a review after using it for a day. Package consists of Octopus Pro, 4 stepper motor drivers TMC 5160, 4 stepper motor drivers TMC 2209, and a set of boards for CAN bus communication. Package arrived in about 15 days, and it seems like there wasn't any damage to the package or the contents. Let's start from opening stepper motor packages and work my way up. In the TMC2209 stepper motor driver, I have found this little cardboard paper that shows the driver pinout. The driver itself, heatsink and a connector cable that I probably won't use but it can be used for for boards that require external UART connection. PCB quality was pretty good, I don't see any issues on the surface. In the TMC5160 Pro, I have found the same cardboard paper that shows the pinout, another plastic box which holds the driver with pre-applied aluminum heatsink. This time around there wasn't any connector cable as this driver doesn't work in UART mode, so you'll have to use the SPI anyway. I have no objections here to quality as well. CAN bus UC board consists of the board itself and a package of small connectors that you can crimp on the wires when you will be doing connections. Personally, I didn't even unpack the package of the small connectors because I have plenty of spare cables laying around and most likely I won't be crimping them anyways. Worst case scenario, I will extend the cables if there will be a necessity. I'd rather not crimp the connectors simply because I cannot trust myself to make good crimps as came from the factory. Not to mention it's rather tedious process. This board is used as a bridge between the main board, a Raspberry Pi or SBC of your choice, and the CAN bus board that goes onto your printhead. Also, I can't stress enough, but Raspberry Pi isn't really needed for Clipper or Octoprint. You can use practically any single board computer that has a similar specs and is listed on the Armbian website in the download section. As you will see in my later videos, I'm using 10 year old board named KubiBoard 2 and it works perfectly fine. Most common replacement is Orange Pi. Next one is EBB36 CAN board version 1.2. Package consists of, similar to before, a bag of connectors and the board itself. Most likely this time around I will need some of them, but my printer isn't really ready for canvas, so those two boards will lie around for a while. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a complicated process to set this up, so I will try to record it, but I cannot guarantee any compatibility aside from the clipper. Perhaps the RepRap firmware supports it, but I haven't tested their firmware yet. I've chosen this board because of a couple of reasons. First of all, it has a built-in accelerometer, so I don't need to worry about the accelerometer placement or making short enough cables for it to work. Apparently this seems to be a common problem which I experienced with the connection of accelerometers. Second reason was the ease of connecting to the main board as it only requires like 4 cables instead of 15 like I have right now. So that should clean up some of this mess. It also has support for PT1000 thermistor, so it can be mounted to the back side of the motor and has a built-in stepper motor driver TMC2209 for the extruder. To connect this board to the bridge board you will only need two wires for the power and two wires for the CAN bus, so it's just a total of four wires. Of course you will be able to connect your fans, end stops, heater, probe and every other thing that's on the printhead. So that should greatly reduce the issues of connecting different hot ends or different stuff. Now the motherboard itself. It's the Octopus Pro version 1.0. 
Not much different from the non-pro version except it supports higher voltage up to 60 volts. There are some other small differences that you can read on their GitHub page. I will link in the description below. But it's not really a big of a deal if you do not plan to use higher voltage. I suggest you stick with the non-pro version as it's cheaper. I have chosen the Pro because I want to test higher voltage for the gantry and I will buy a 48 volt power supply at some point. Package consists of the famous Big 3 Tech rubber duck, USB-C cable, motherboard itself and a package of small spare jumpers. There are some damage on the bottom of the box, but the board itself wasn't damaged. Most likely just some gold pins scratched the surface. What I like on this board, it has 8 stepper motor driver slots that can be adjusted to any configuration you like. For example, you can have 3 high voltage drivers and 5 normal ones. There is a jumper on top of each driver which you can select the voltage. Aside from that, it has a standard functionality a pretty much every board has, but it also has a ton of connections that you can utilize in any way. I think it's also pretty cheap as it cost me around $60. There is a $50 version that has a different processor which doesn't support the RepRap firmware, just the Clipper and the Marlin, but I figured I want to test the RepRap firmware at some point, so I've gotten myself the more expensive one. On the top of that, it has an output power of 5, 12 and 24 volts and that makes it really convenient to connect external things to it. For example, it can power your SBC like Raspberry Pi. On the board you will also find a separate power connection for the motors, main power and the bad power if you want to somehow use a different voltage for any of those. I don't want to talk about all the motherboard features, you can check that on their website as it will turn it into a marketing video. So. I want to talk about the experience I had with the board. Setup took me around 3 hours I think, and that is also counting all the connections I had to redo. It had a decent startup profile for Clipper which had almost all the pins I needed. Had to set up the jumpers and the stepper motors as 4 of them will be running in the SPI mode and 4 of them will be running in the UART. It was a pain to get them out. But you have to understand, it's kind of hard to design a small motherboard that has many jumpers and so many connections, while also putting jumpers outside of the stepper motor socket. I initially made a mistake, took all the jumpers, effectively setting the stepper drivers in the UART mode. But TMC5160 does not support it, so I had to put 12 jumpers back in. I wasn't quite sure how to set up my probe, which is the stock trunks inductive probe, so I had to check the manual. Other than that, I had no issues setting up Clipper, but it was a time consuming, not gonna lie. After checking each sensor in each motor, I was able to do some test prints. I haven't pushed drivers hard since I have no cooling whatsoever on them, so they are moderately set to 0.8 amps. Yet they were able to successfully print for 2 hours straight, so I think it's a big success compared to the previous board that wasn't able to finish a 15 minute print without cooling. You shouldn't expect any difference in the print quality compared to the other boards, unless you had some like very old board with the Allegro drivers. You can expect a lot of convenience however. For example, because I have so many drivers, I could use the Z-Tilt feature in the Clipper. It is basically connecting a different stepper drivers to 2Z motors and allowing firmware to automatically adjust the bed tilt. It also enables you to make a quad drive gantry and a kinematic bed that will quote consume quote 7 drivers at least. It is also a bit of a form of a future proofing if you have a project printer. For the record, this isn't the only 3D printer board with so many features. There is also a Mellow Super, but I have some troubles with communicating with them, so I will stick with the Big 3 Tech 
unless they have something the mellow has and I want it. When I had some questions, Big Twitter responded quite fast, while a mellow took some days and ultimately forgot to respond to me while I was trying to buy a pre-drilled carbon tube for VisiBot. That wraps up this video. Ultimately, I'm very satisfied with the board and I have absolutely no issues with it yet. So for now, it's 5 out of 5 rating from me. I will let you know in the upcoming videos if that has changed. If you liked it, hit that subscribe button as it will help me get motivated to do more builds in the future.